Hello there. Welcome to episode 3 of the Agile Methodology Tutorial for the Beginner Series. If you have not checked out the first and the second episodes yet, please use the links in the description box or you can click the card on the top right corner to check it out before you watch this episode. Story so far. Jane wanted a home delivery mobile app for her restaurant Wagen Gardens. Jane meets Alex, a consultant from Webweave app development company, and Alex explains that they can have a basic working app in the customer's hand within three months using Agile methodology. Jane is so thrilled and signs up as a client. Alex, with the help of Phil, the business analyst assigned to this project, conduct different elicitation sessions such as workshops, interviews, survey and focus groups and collects the business and user requirements for the mobile app. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already and also hit the bell icon so that you will be notified when the next episodes are posted. Now let's proceed with the story. Alex had mentioned Jane about the next step in the process Sprint Zero. She was aware of sprints, which is a two-week duration for delivering product increments. But the term sprint zero made her curious as to why they were starting from sprint zero rather than sprint one. Sprint zero is a preparation sprint. There is no product increment delivered. Focus is on the below three key items. First one, onboarding of scrum team. Second, Creation of product backlog and prioritization for MVP, minimum viable product. And the third one, architectural tech stack finalization and environment setup. We will go deep into each of these topics as the story progresses. Let's look at the first item, onboarding of the scrum team. Alex had already initiated the request for the scrum team in his company Webweave as soon as Jane had signed the agreement couple of weeks back. The team had been assembled now. Let's go over the composition of the team. Typically, scrum team involves three roles. First one, the product owner. As mentioned earlier, Alex is playing the role of a product owner interacting with the business and the end users, that is Jane's team and her customers to understand their needs and requirements. He will play the main link between end users and the scrum team. He also maintains and prioritizes the product backlog, more on that shortly. Second one, the other key role is scrum master. Scrum master helps to keep the team accountable to their commitments to the business. Remove any roadblocks that might impede the team's productivity. Organize critical meetings. We will have more on this in the next episode. Jim joins the team as a scrum master. Third one, development team. The third role is development team. The size can vary from three to nine people. Development team is a self-organized cross-functional team with all the skills required to turn product backlog into increments of potentially releasable functionality. Scrum recognizes no titles for development team members, regardless of the work being performed by the person. It comprises of developers, tester, business analyst, and solution architect. The composition of the development team is as follows. Business analyst, Phil, whom we have already met in the previous episode. Developers, Ron, Kim, and Adrian. Tester, Kate, and solution architect, Tom. Jim sets up a meet and greet session with all the team members. Next, we move on to the second item, creation of product backlog and MVP prioritization. Alex refers to the requirements captured from the elicitation sessions which were held the previous week and then starts logging epics and user stories in Jira. Epics are high level requirements and they are broken down further into fragments called user stories. We have detailed videos on creating epics and user stories in Jira, which is widely used tool for agile projects. The link has been provided in the description. Check it out later on. All the epics and user stories put together is termed as a product backlog. 
Next off is the prioritization of this product backlog. As mentioned earlier in the first video, Jane wants to put the mobile app in the hands of the customers with a minimum set of features. This is termed as MVP or Minimum Viable Product. Alex needs Jane's team's feedback to finalize the scope for MVP. He uses a technique called User Story Mapping. All the epics and user stories are arranged from a user journey perspective as shown in this diagram. Firstly, the customer would browse the menu for selection of the food item. Then they select and order the items they desire followed by selection of payments method and lastly track the order until it is delivered to them. As shown in the diagram, an epic is created for each of these major steps in the customer journey and then they are further broken down into user stories with specific requirements. Alex then arranges for a requirement prioritization meeting with Jane and her team, something similar to the workshop session from the last episode. In the session, Alex walks through the epics and user stories and asks Jane and her team for the necessary features for the MVP. It was agreed during the session that the MVP would have 9 user stories and that the mobile app would be limited to the Android version only as Alex had learned earlier from the survey that 65% of the users had Android phones. Alex thanks Jane and her team. We have a detailed video on the user story mapping. I have provided the link in the description. Check it out. Alex then asks Phil, the business analyst, to expand the stories and add supporting documents and acceptance criteria. Again, we have detailed videos on this. Refer to the description below. Jim sets up a refinement session with the Scrum team. This is the first type of event. The purpose is to go over the stories for the upcoming sprint and ensure all the details are available. Else, the details and clarifications can be added by the business analyst or the product owner. Let's move on to the last item, architectural envisioning and tech stack finalization. The tech stack is finalized by the solution architect. It consists of front-end, technologies that are used to develop the interface that interacts with the end-users. Back-end, this involves your server hosting, databases, programming language, business logic, and so on. For this Android app, Tom selects Android UI for front-end and Kotlin as the programming language. Developers Kim, Ron, and Adrian work on getting the environment set up with the help of infrastructure team. Different environments are created for development, testing, pre-prod, and production. Then they work on configuring the IDE, a consolidated platform that provides necessary libraries and interfaces and supporting tools required for development. Android Studio would be used for development of the app. Kate works on obtaining the necessary Android devices for testing as the first release was decided to be on Android platforms. And she also works on setting up the test automation tool RPM. Hope you learned about Sprint Zero in this video. In our next video, we will go over what happens in Sprint 1. Until then, happy learning!